So OnePlus has been a wee bit of a tease when it comes to its latest flagship smartphone, the OnePlus 10 Pro 5G. It seems to launch bloody ages ago over in China, but now finally it has made its way over to Blighty to bless us all with its super premium hardware and a lovely bit of Oxygen OS action. You've got some second generation Hasselblad camera action, even if some of the hardware does sound remarkably familiar. Got that super powerful Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and lots of great gaming smarts packed in there. Plus some serious top end specs and some of the most satisfying smartphone software out there. So certainly on paper, the OnePlus 10 Pro seems to be a strong rival for like the Xiaomi 12, the Realme GT2 Pro, and of course the Oppo Find X5 Pro. But is it really all it's cracked up to be? Well, let's whip it on out of the box, take it a full on tour of the hardware, the software, do a game and test, all that good stuff ahead of my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pause, subscribe, and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. All right, so first up, what do you actually get in this lovely red box? Well, you've got your OnePlus 10 Pro 5G, naturally. You have got a meaty old 80-watt SuperVOOC charger with pop-up pin action. Wouldn't be a OnePlus smartphone without an extremely red USB cable. You've got your Porky Pin device, which is attached to the welcome letter, which seems to have shrunk considerably over previous efforts. Let's see what Pete has to say this time. And if you want to find out, just freeze frame, because I can't be bothered to read it all out. Got some stickers, including a hyper boost effort you could potentially slap on your schlong or your partner's schlong for comedic purposes. Personally, I just like saying schlong. And you do have a condom case bundled in there as well, just to slap around your lovely shiny new OnePlus 10 Pro and keep it safe. As usual, got a bit of never settle action on there. Now that's all of the lovely box stuff, so let's crack on with the actual fun. All right, so a big happy hello to the OnePlus 10 Pro, which is finally over on British shores. Design-wise, there's certainly not much in the way of surprises with the OnePlus 10 Pro, certainly if you've got any of the recent OnePlus flagships. It's another 6.7 inch piece, just like the OnePlus 9 Pro from last year. Once again, that screen pretty much fills the front end of the phone though, thankfully, with very skinny bezels surrounding it. And that screen does slope ever so gently around the edges of the device as well. Touch wood, hopefully not to the point where your palm flab starts to intrude on that display and balk the responsiveness. Certainly so far seems pretty solid, but I'll be fully testing that out again for my in-depth review. And that mighty screen is now protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, which should hopefully mean no shattering if you accidentally drop this OnePlus 10 Pro face down on a hard floor. Although I have found that Victus does tend to scratch up rather easily, so that's why I'm quite glad that OnePlus has slapped a pre-installed screen protector on this bad boy. But it's around back where you'll find the biggest changes on this handset, notably that absolute whopper of a camera. It's definitely a bit of a beefcake, that's for sure, though the good news is that it doesn't jut too far from the actual back end of the smartphone. You've got a bit of the old Hasselblad brand in there, of course, because that partnership is still in effect. You've got some ceramic protection for that camera bump, so hopefully should prove scratch resistant, just like the rest of the RSN, which has Gorilla Glass 5 slathered all over it. Certainly doesn't look or feel like glass, though. It's got this lovely matte finish, which so far is proven perfectly resistant to fingerprint grease and other muck. You've got two different color choices. This is the Volcanic Black model. This is actually the cheaper of the two. 799 quid comes with 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Otherwise, you can also grab the OnePlus 10 Pro in Emerald Forest with an anti-glare finish. That one costs 899 quid, 100 pounds more expensive, but comes with 12 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. And it's good to see that OnePlus is sticking with the old alert slider up at the top here, so you can have that on ring, vibrate or silent, depending on what you're up to. Very handy when you're quickly jumping into a meeting or something. And no mention of an actual official IP rating in the OnePlus 10 Pro specs, but OnePlus tends to not really make a big sing and dance of the water resistance on its smartphone. Should be absolutely fine in a downpour and all that kind of stuff. And OnePlus also very kindly sent in a couple of the official cases for the OnePlus 10 Pro. So let's slap these on, see what they're like. So this here is the Sandstone bumper. It looks very similar actually to the one you get bundled in the box with the OnePlus 10 Pro, except it's got a bit more texture to it, feels slightly fuzzy, rather nice, and uh, it's a bit more rigid, for now, for now. A considerably more jazzy affair is this so-called Quantum Photography bumper. Adds a proper bit of style to the arse end of the OnePlus 10 Pro. So there you go, you got those as an option, if you fancy it. So the OnePlus 10 Pro is running the latest Android 12, of course, with OxygenOS slapped on top as well. Version 12.1, to be precise. 
And it is good to see that Oxygen OS is still present and correct on OnePlus smartphones, just gives them a bit of extra identity over the likes of the Oppo phones, etc. In version 12.1, still got that stock Android vibe, but with plenty of bonus bits chucked on, the shelf is now actually dragged down from the right hand side, so you don't have to decide between pulling down the notifications bar or the shelf. Definitely prefer this setup, that's for sure. And as you can see there, lots of widgets on there, more customizable than ever before. You can drag these little doohickeys about the place to reorder them however you like them. And you can add widgets to the shelf from pretty much any app that you have downloaded, as well as get rid of any stuff that you're not really that bothered about. You can even customize the little greeting up top, which is a nice touch. And OnePlus offers plenty of other bonus features in Oxygen OS slapped on top of Android 12. So dive into special features, for instance, you've got the likes of the new work-life balance. This allows you to set up a work mode, for instance, which can help to limit your notifications, keep the phone on silent, whatever else. You can schedule what times the work mode is active. And as you can see there, say specifically which apps you want to actually notify you and then do the exact same for life modes for the rest of your time. If you don't have a strict nine to five sort of work schedule as well, you can also have it based on what Wi-Fi network you're connected to or what location you're in. Of course, personally, this wouldn't work at all for me because not only do I work from home full time, uh, but I also do not have a set schedule at all. I'm basically working every day, so I'll just leave that knocked off. And because the OnePlus 10 Pro is, to put it politely, a bit of a beast, it's good to see some one-handed help on here. So for instance, you can drag down uh, the top end of the screen towards the bottom. It's the same feature as found in Color OS, just as is the icon drag down tool, which again, just pulls everything down towards the bottom. So nice and easy to select what you want. And one of the best bits in here is the personalization section where you can change up the wallpapers, the actual icon design of a material style, pebble style, whatever you like. And you've also got some new always on display options to mess around with, including a good bit of Bitmoji, way. You've got to download the separate Bitmoji app, take a selfie, and then it creates a cartoon little fella version of you. I think it's been quite generous with the amount of hair it's given it, um, but whatever. And then there he is right there, just, uh, just adding a bit of flair and color to your always on display. This right here is seductive Chris Moji. Hey ladies, wanna, wanna come join me in my big ready pink sofa? Oh, here I am apparently taking my mid-morning dump. Excellent, at least that's what I hope I'm doing. I don't actually know what my other hand's up to. That's a, that's a bad Chris Moji, bad. Or well, if that doesn't float your boat, you've got all the usual uh, options, plenty of analog and digital efforts, etc. And I can't see that standard Android 12 option to change up the UI color scheme based on the wallpaper you've got, but you can just manually uh, change it to whatever you like instead. And the OnePlus 10 Pro has some legs on it as well because you've got three years of Android updates, four years of security updates, so no worries there. On the security side of things, well, you've got an in-display fingerprint sensor. It is an optical effort as usual. What on earth am I doing now? I appear to be really, really enjoying myself. Seriously, just, just look away. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Uh, in-display fingerprint sensor, yeah, it's an optical effort as usual, so it just takes a basic 2D image, but touch wood so far. Seems pretty responsive, doesn't seem to be giving me any jip. And as ever, that is backed by a reliable bit of face recognition as well. So as you can see, super nippy, literally tap that power button, you're pretty much straight in there. And as I mentioned before, this black model comes with 128 gigs of onboard storage. As you can see, I've used quite a bit of that already, though a good chunk of that is good old Genshin Impact, of course. If that's going to trouble you, I'd recommend upgrading to the greedy model with a double the storage because there's no micro SD memory card support here as usual. Now, I do struggle to tell the difference between a lot of flagship smartphone displays these days because they're all so bloody good. And again, the OnePlus 10 Pro seems to have a pretty much identical panel to the likes of the Oppo Find X5 Pro, the Xiaomi 12 Pro, etc. 6.7 inch AMOLED display with a Quad HD plus maximum resolution, so crisp, bold, bright, vibrant. Apparently it's LTPO 2.0 now. So once again, got the full one to 120 Hertz refresh range, but apparently it's more energy efficient than ever before. And thanks to a little bit of extra color calibration, apparently the colors look more natural at lower brightnesses, which yeah, I mean, that looks really, really good when you do tone down that brightness, you still get some pretty rich, vivid visuals coming through. Of course, as always, you can piddle around with the color reproduction in the display set and set to vivid by default, but you can go to natural, you can go to full on pro mode, get a bit of DP3 action in there. And if you're colorblind, you've got that color vision enhancement tool to help out. And one feature I'm looking forward to checking out is the new AI adaptive auto brightness, which apparently every time you manually touch 
that brightness meter with all the brightness enabled, it will just take a little mental note of it. So if you're constantly making it a bit brighter in the evenings, then it'll be like, okay, this guy is struggling to see what's going on. Let's just make sure it's a, it's a bit brighter at night time. So hopefully that'll actually do its job because some auto brightnesses, they, they, they are a bit rubbish to be perfectly frank and I do end up overriding them more often than not. But overall, it certainly seems like another stunning display from OnePlus, that's for sure. And uh, yeah, just the tiny little selfie orifice getting in the way when you go full screen up in that corner there. At least it's tucked away and it isn't particularly big. And yep, you've also got a stereo speaker set up here on the OnePlus 10 Pro. So let's bump up that volume to maximum levels and brace yourself. Hello gorgeous peeps, I'm Chris from Techspert and today we're going to be taking a bloody good squint at the OnePlus Nord 2 CE. I f***ed it up again every time. It's, it's the OnePlus Nord CE 2. OnePlus Nord CE 2. Well, on that top volume, it is loud as out. It's not quite a balanced stereo speaker setup, unfortunately, because it's just using the earpiece up at the top end here. Uh, so if you muffle that bottom speaker, definitely the, uh, the volume and the quality drops quite considerably. But overall, very solid. It'll certainly do the job if you're trying to listen to stuff in a really noisy household or general environment. You've got bugger all headphone jack action on here, unfortunately pretty standard for a flagship smartphone, but at least you've got Bluetooth 5.2 support. So that'll do the job when you're uh, streaming a bit of music or something. Weirdly in Deezer, the, uh, the top end of each of the album names seems to be getting cut off. I wonder if that's down to the fact that I've gone for OnePlus Sans as my font. And yeah, yeah, that was indeed the issue there, so I'm just going to leave that turned off. So powering the OnePlus 10 Pro is again that Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, very popular amongst flagship Android smartphones in 2022, as you'd expect. It's backed here on the black model by 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM, and as you can see, they're very similar benchmark scores to other premium blowers like the Oppo Find X5 Pro. So yeah, everyday running so far, silky smooth, helped along of course by the 120Hz refresh rate support. But of course, the one true test of performance these days is a good bit of Genshin Impact action, especially when you ramp up the detail settings to the highest levels and get it set to that 60 frames per second mark. As usual, you've got all kinds of great gaming tools bundled in there, which are just a quick flick away, which can be used to tweak the screen responsiveness, which to be fair, I didn't have a problem with that at all. It was super responsive, zero latency, basically, as far as I could tell. Got the handy dedicated performance mode, so all of the phone's resources were chucked at Genshin and not wasted on other stuff. And yes, when I was playing uh, through a good few random little missions on Genshin Impact over the course of a good hour or so, I did notice the occasional little frame rate drop, but nothing severe at all. We're talking just a little stumble here and there. Overall, highly playable as you would hope for from the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. And of course, that big old spacious, super crisp display is just the perfect way of enjoying this game with those crisp, colorful visuals. And if you're worried about the OnePlus 10 Pro overheating under pressure, well, stress no further. OnePlus has actually upgraded the cooling system over previous generations. It's a new five-layer setup, including a vapor chamber. You've got some copper foil action in there, graphene layer shenanigans. And yeah, of course, after about sort of 15, 20 minutes of Genshin, the back end of the phone did start to warm up, that's for sure, but not to a troublesome degree. And according to the internal thermal readouts, didn't really get into those high 30s. Now one of the upgrades I'm really, really, really happy to see here on the OnePlus 10 Pro is the bigger battery. It's now a 5,000 milliamp cell compared with the 4,500 milliamp on the previous generation. So hopefully should give you all day play, no worries. It's dual cell technology as well. So not only is it bigger, it also charges faster. You got support for 80 watt Super VOOC charging. So the fact that it's a bigger battery, it takes about the same amount of time to charge up as the older OnePlus 9 Pro, basically half an hour from zero to full. And you've also got 50 watt wireless charging support on this thing as well. And of course, I'll be fully testing out the OnePlus 10 Pro. I've got my SIM slapped in there already, so I'll be using it as my full-time smartphone. Stay tuned for my in-depth review for more on the battery life, whether it really is an upgrade. The old uh, Chris Morgi appears to be doing a bit of uh, modeling or something like that now. I mean, Christ, I look even more like Louis Spence. And now last up, the camera tech. And slapped there on the back end, you've once again got a 48 megapixel Sony IMX789 primary sensor with optical image stabilization built in. That is the same sensor as the previous generation, although the 10 Pro does apparently use second generation Hasselblad software. So one of the big changes is now in the photo settings, you've got the option to shoot 10-bit uh, color images using the Hyph format, which sadly isn't as widely supported, but if you do have a Hyph image, you can then convert it into a regular JPEG. 
You'll notice when you're browsing at these 10-bit images in the photo gallery, you've got this little 10-bit icon up top. And if you just tap down here, more, there is a convert to JPEG option. And thankfully, there is a big clear icon up at the top of the screen when you have the 10-bit color option enabled. So you don't take dozens of photos in high format by accident and then have to convert all those buggers later. Besides that, it's pretty much business as usual. All of the standard uh, extra bonus modes are chucked in here, like sort of the portrait mode, the nightscape mode. You've got lots of other stuff chucked on there on top. The 48 megapixel primary sensor shoots 12 megapixel images by default, but you can swap to the ultra resolution mode like so. And yeah, certainly that 48 megapixel primary shooter seems to snap very nice looking pics as long as the lighting conditions ain't too troublesome. I have seen some sort of lens flare and other issues in brighter light, that's for sure. Uh, but I will be fully testing out this camera tech for my in-depth review, so I'll check back for that. And one of the changes for this generation is the fact you've got a upgraded 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. Like the Oppo Find X5 Pro and the Realme GT2 Pro, this has a 150 degree viewing angle which you can either use as normal otherwise you can get a sort of a crazy fisheye effect on the go which can certainly be quite amusing if you've got any uh, kids or pets and last up you also have an 8 megapixel telephoto shooter with a 3.3 times optical zoom as you can see there although you can further pull in for a maximum 30 times zoom and the stabilization is pretty damn impressive uh, even at that 30 times level helped along by the built-in ois although of course the detail level is not so strong the Hasselblad Pro mode has been upgraded here for the OnePlus 10 Pro. So now you've got some bonus options. You can use all three of the, uh, the different lenses with it. And you've got greater flexibility when it comes to formats as well. Not only can you shoot in uh, JPEG or RAW, but there's the new RAW Plus option, which basically takes three different images, a standard one, an underexposed, image and an overexposed image so you can blend them together and create something really special later on and plenty of options when it comes to shooting video as well the oneplus 10 pro does go all the way up to 8k resolution otherwise if you leave it at the 4k level you've got yourself a choice of 30 60 or even 120 frames per second and just to give you an idea of how that affects stabilization here's 4k footage at 30 frames per second and then moving on to 60 frames per second and then if you want to bump all the way up to the maximum level here is 4k at 120 fps and again i'll be fully testing the video smart here on the oneplus 10 pro for my in-depth review but here's just some quick and simple samples that i shot about the place in the last sort of 24 hours and then up front you've got a 32 megapixel selfie snapper it's that sony imx 615 sensor and again should prove absolutely fine for your everyday selfies complete with portrait mode smart and you've even now got uh, support for nightscape mode as well so hopefully good for those low light shots again i'll be fully checking that bad boy out and if you'd like to shoot a lovely bit of video of you chilling with your homies then uh, you can also do that at a full hd level so there's no 4k resolution video shooting here on the OnePlus 10 Pro. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame, isn't it, Veronica? Yes, that's right, Chris, this is a real shame. But the audio pickup seems fine and everything, so hooray. Anyhow, that in a nutshell, my lovelies, is the OnePlus 10 Pro 5G, as I say, hitting the UK from 799 quid for this lovely black model, or 899 if you want the upgraded greeny version. I've got to say so far, I am liking it, but I will be giving you my in-depth review soon. Uh, it'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a blinding rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.